had a free kick from like 40 yards out. No one ever lie. Remember the goal that Ronaldo scored against Portsmouth? Like, yo, the in the newspaper. In the newspaper, but it was a picture of me. So they thought some, someone had tipped him off that oh, yeah, he was doing anything going to this high school. Da, 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 da. He's be one of the only black kids there. So it they must be him. Yeah. So, <laughs> <It's they're, called laughs> him. so as you said, like the uh, the fourth week against Manchester United. Yeah. Sense. So then fourth week uh, we had Man United at home. So so this time I'm like yeah. So f- third week when it's my fourth week of my trial. And I'm thinking like, look, this is obviously the Liverpool Manchester game's the biggest in England. I'm thinking these will be probably the best players in the whole of the country, you know what I mean, at the time. So I think Liverpool and United at the time had the, the best academies. So I think this is where to I can really, really test myself and see how good I really am. Levels. So we played, so they had a cold team as well at the time. So half of them now are my friends, you know what I mean? So Who was in their team then? Like so they had uh, Tyler Blackett, centre back, okay. uh, Raheem Hanley, left back. Um, they had uh, Rico Gomez, so Angel Gomez is all the brother, one of my best friends, Rico. Uh, he was cold. Like, if it's the ability this guy had growing up here, yeah, ridiculous. And I'll tell you about the goal that he scored against us that day as well. So we had like, them lot, and, and it was just crazy beef. And they didn't like each other, so the Liverpool, and, and it was funny for me, obviously, being like living yeah, in Manchester. But I'm Liverpool, from, yeah. 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 Um, so I remember when I was playing after them, I was like, wow, you don't, you don't sound like you're, you're a scout. So I'm, like, I'm from Sheffield, I just lived like, moved to Manny now. So. We played against them. It was just a crazy game. We beat them three one. I remember I scored. The, uh, I set up the second goal and I scored the third goal. And uh, I remember like when I scored against, I just ran around the pitch. Like, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yo, I just, I just scored against Man United. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm on trial as well at this point. I'm thinking, like, this has to be the game that yeah, secures me, yeah. like, getting signed. Sick. And then, obviously, like I said, they scored one as well. So uh, Rico Gomez, Angel Gomez, is all the brother. So he was. Played similar position like number ten for, for United. They had a free kick, yeah, it was like forty yards out. No one ever lie. Remember the goal that Ronaldo scored against Portsmouth when he, he dipped. <sighs> yeah, the jump. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So obviously these man, he's Portuguese as well. He's uh, doing the same thing, bro. He hit the ball, yeah, hit the valve, like free kick from like 30, 40 yards out. I, I didn't, I didn't think he was gonna shoot, and he licked it top bin. <laughs> and I remember we was on the pitch, yeah. He was an opposition. I've got up to my <laughs> so, <laughs> I was putting him. I was putting I said, nah, that was too sick. That was tough. That what was the score for that when he, when he scored that? Uh, so he made it 2 1. Ah. Yeah, so this was just before I scored. And I was still like, celebrating, though. Like it was, yeah, yeah, like, like he celebrated because both. Like it was the winner the or team, level or all yeah, set. I'm then celebrating whole team that. Celebrated cause we <laughs> could, and I went because then I was running back. I just put him down. I was like, yeah, that, that was tough. Yeah. <laughs> so this day we talk about that goal because it was just like ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, then after that, um, we played again. The manager's like, yeah, you played well, this, that, the other. Um, and then so we've gone home, and then because at that point uh, the, the the scout Roy used to pick me up and drop me off and things like that because he wanted to like monitor see how I was doing, and then on the on the this was on the Sunday and then on the Monday uh, he's um, he's called me and he said oh um, basically tell your your parents to come to come down uh, tonight when you come down on the Monday. So wow. I think heart's beating now. Heart, bro, heart was heart's beating. beating. I didn't bro. concentrate in school that whole day. I was just <laughs> oh, school's right ramping. Up, man. Head, school's head was right just up. gone. You know what I mean? At least I'm telling everyone like I'm on trial at Liverpool. Some people aren't believing me. They think I'm lying. You know what I mean? So I'm thinking, okay, like this is going to be the one. So I remember I got in there on the Monday. They said to me, hey, look, we really like like what you've been doing. You've came in, you've focused, you've hit the ground running, you've made friends with everyone, you've integrated yourself well. Uh, so we're going to offer you a contract. Uh, as soon as I said that, I was just like, Yes, like yo. <laughs> didn't even hear how long. After I didn't hear how long. After no, that, didn't yeah, I didn't hear nothing. After that, literally, I remember like my, da- I, my, my stepdad. I was, t- I was chatting to him after with Roy, the the scout, and I was like, "So how long have I got? What, what's my what's, what's my um, contract? What's my contract?" Just that the other, um, because so, after that, I just I just shut off because in my head I was thinking, "Yo, I have just signed for Liverpool." You know what I mean? Uh, so they give me a deal to right. So in that moment, mm-hmm. obviously, you're trying to be professional and yeah. you know appreciative but inside I like was thinking, no one it's can just chat fire to me. yeah bro because you've got to understand like the journey of like it was, it, everything just changed within an 18 month period so i've gone from playing sunday league to playing for junior blades signed the sheffield united got knocked back and the next thing i was just signed for liverpool scored against man united like i couldn't believe it i felt like i was living a dream you know what i mean like, crazy and then like i said we touched on before like from the, the area that we grew up in at the mm. time as well. 2007, coming out of Sheffield, 2007, yeah. bro. Like, Rest in peace, Vendor. Yeah, so Crazy, it's just man. madness happening. So mm. 
yeah, it was just at the time I just felt so accomplished. I was like, you know what? And then, so they gave me a deal to end the season and said, if you impress us, we'll extend it until you're under 16s. Up to Scholar. So, up to Scholar. So, 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 so up to, up to the, yeah, so just before your Scholar year. Okay. So, so they basically said, like, yeah, let's see. And after that, two weeks later, we said, no, nah, look, we're extending it. And so, what? so, I, so basically, how it used to work as well back then was, each season, you get told if you get an extended for the next year. At the end of the season. Yeah, you get mm. told at the end of the season. So I'm four weeks into my trial. I've been told, look, we're going to extend it to the end of the season. On my sixth week, where my trial is meant to end, I've been told, yo, here's a two year deal on 2016. So Mad. I, I was just like, yeah, done. Like, I, I knew, like, for the next two years now, I need to just focus. Be, yeah. This, that, and the other. And at that time, I was playing. So I went in, played striker, played left wing, played centre mid sometimes, played left back. I just used to play everywhere. but and I, even if I was a left back, I'd still be attacking, you know. Yeah, what I mean? so, yeah, yeah. Which obviously I, I look at it as a strength because you can do a lot of things. But I also, in in like in a, in a few minutes, we'll touch on that. That was a weakness as well to an extent because mm-hmm. when the manager comes in and I want to nail certain positions, if you say, "Oh, I play multiple positions," they're thinking, "What are you talking yeah. about?" You know what I mean? So, is, is it almost like a jack of all trades, yeah, master, master of none yeah. kind of thing? Yes. Yeah, but so. but 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 so like in your mind, mm-hmm. what were your Best attributes at that point. Obviously, we're not playing centre back. I could do anything. Left. Like I could high attack, speed. I could defend. I could track back. I like it working hard. You know what I mean? When I'm on mm. the pitch, mm. I want to leave the pitch feeling like yo, I've, yeah. I've put in this shit. Like I shifted Left it. All out. So looking back on it, if I could give 13, 14 year old me advice, would it mean to stay in centre mid because of my yeah. size as well? Yeah. I'm quick and distribution. Be, yeah, and I can break up play. There's yeah. not many left footed centre mids that are my height as well. Anyway, so it was just one of them where that's the only advice that I think. I'd give my younger self to just nail down that position and stay there and be like, because when you're in that position, you can do everything, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? So mm-hmm. I didn't really have that advice from anyone. Mm-hmm. And I see you learned that with experience. Um, I yeah. was actually having this conversation with mm-hmm. Ken's on the phone mm-hmm. yesterday. Mm-hmm. Call you kids balls, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. on a veterans, his brother, mm-hmm. on a man academy, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I was saying to Ken's on the phone or yesterday, I was saying, yo, so obviously he's getting better, mm-hmm. scoring goals. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was saying, so where's the next position then? Because mm-hmm. I've watched him ever since he was like six, seven, eight. Mm-hmm. He's like, Do you know what? Send him mid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just jump in midfield and just kick back. Yeah, 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 he's yeah, a cold number ten. Straight, straight, cold, straight. Straight. But he, he said number ten to me. Yeah, yeah, I think he said yeah, cold yeah. number ten. You got the quick feet. Yeah, he's nice with it. Hundred percent number ten. So nah. So then after that, like I said, so the so next next season was the under fifteen season um, when we played that. So then. This, this season was just weird because on, on under 15s we played on a Wednesday but then you played on Wednesday with the under 15s mm. and then you'd play on a Saturday with the under 16s if he was good enough you know what I mean so only certain people got to play with the 16s okay. and then I think at that time it was like four of us that was always up for the 16s on a Saturday yeah because 15s so, is a weird, weird age group so it? like there's no there's no there's season no, basically yeah, there's for no some season. reason so you play on a Wednesday with under 15s but then if you're good enough you'd also play with the under 16s so yeah. for me that whole season I was playing two games which looking back on it now, then kind of affected me at 16s a bit. But so I was playing like, every week. I was playing striker or left wing for, for the 15s. For the 15s. Um, so I was always like flying. Exactly. Da, 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 da. But then for the 16s, I was playing left back. Um, so I was playing left back. So it was like Connor Cody, Andre Wisden, John yes. Flanagan. That was that. were the year above me. So I was okay. playing left back for them at under 16s. Okay. Um, looking back on that, I should have nailed that position as well because I was. Very comfortable there. I was quick. I was strong. Mm. I had a good, like, good pass or whatever not. Um, so, so that was happening. So at fifteen, it was kind of like a transition year. Just seeing what's going on. So, so <coughs> wait, wait, wait. This is mad. So, you obviously was, was scouted, mm-hmm. had a contract for Liverpool, yeah. rapid. Mm-hmm. But then you must have had to relocate again. Not yet. So we was eventually. Yeah. So, but at this point. So once I signed for Liverpool, because I was living in on the outskirts of Manchester, mm. it used to take about 40 minutes, yeah, 45 sometimes. That. So because my stepdad used to work all the time, my mum was like, driving Liverpool, sending a taxi from Manchester uh, from Liverpool to come and pick me up in Manchester. So basically how my day would go is I'd wake up in the morning, go to school. So I'd basically go there with my Liverpool. So I finally got yeah, my Liverpool yeah, bag. Yeah, I got the tracksuit. So I got the tracksuit. Um, so I'd wake up in the morning. I don't, every single day, I'd always take my, 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 my training bag to school. How many pics you got with that bag? <laughs> Do you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, if I find it, I'm going to I'm gonna fi- I'm gonna try and find or it. Or send it. I'm going to send it. I should do somewhere. I have something. I, I should do something somewhere. But 
I'd, and I, in the winter, I used to have a big Liverpool coat. I'd take that to school everywhere. So um, I'd go to school. I didn't really care like about school after yeah, that, yeah. you know what I mean? And I, to be fair, I never really like struggled in school, so it was always all right. Um, then after school, Liverpool would send a taxi to go and pick me up from my school and take me training. So I strapped to training, get to tra- the academy for like four or five o'clock, train at half five. After that, they'd give us some like butties, food, whatever, not eat, and then go back home in a taxi uh, from Liverpool to Manchester. And that was my life, like Monday to Friday, Friday how long? Wednesday, but I'd play on a Saturday for the 16s. So after that, so at that time, I wasn't partying with like my friends, going out in the parks and stuff like that, 15, 16, I wasn't really doing that. I was just, just focused on football, like, mm. every time, like, learning, how can I get better, how can I do this, that, the other. So I was always trying to, like, improve at that point. Um, so I've seen it, and that was helping because I was playing a year up now with the 16s. Mm. And then, uh, so that season finished, done really well, was flying, and then the takeover then happened um, when Rafa Benitez brought in the people from Barca, so new managers came in, new coaches. So like it was a whole transition. Before that, it was people from Ajax that was there. So they was like in, they was interested in like one v ones. You can skin people and take people on. Then when the people from Barcelona came in, so a guy called Rodolfo Borrell, and um, was that Pep's assistant, and, and, then, and another guy called Pep Segura. So Rodolfo Borrell is now Pep Guardiola's assistant, assistant and nice. Pep Segura is now Barcelona's general manager for the whole club. club. Mm. So he runs, he basically runs Barcelona. Runs but before that, they was they was there for fifteen years. So they've seen the likes of Messi, Fabregas, Xavi, Iniesta, Ronaldinho, all, all, all of them through the Barcelona academy. Through the Barcelona academy. La Masia. So they, la, literally, they ran La Masia for like 15, 20 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. So they came to Liverpool now. Sick. So they're now like, so I'm thinking, yo, pressure because they're bringing Tiki Taka. This is 2009, like prime Messi times, you know what I mean? So, mm. so they've come through now and then we've done pre season under 16s. And then they're watching us and they're saying to me, look, we really, really like you, you know what I mean? Like, you're a big guy, but you're quite tight. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. under 16 season is when, like, so I'm, I'm thinking, I've got another year now. I've got this season to try and get myself a scholarship. Like, I've got to, like, you have to level up. In. Yeah, you have to level I wanna, up. I want to play number nine, da, 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 like everything, you know what I mean? And then pre season has come and then the season starts. So we played first game, we played Fulham away. I played as a number nine striker. We beat them 5 2 or something. Scored two set up two, sit like flying. Second game we played someone at home. I scored again. Third game we played Nottingham Forest away. Uh, Jamal Lascelles was the was the captain Serious. for Nottingham at the time, so like, good centre back. Uh, so that game before the game, I was obviously I've started the season like on fire, you know what I mean? And there's talks already. So by that time, Adam Morgan, who was my strike partner, he'd signed the scholarship already, so he's got given the scholarship because he was just so like, cold. St- Cold like scores, but he's like a out and out striker. Like with myself, I play different positions, but with him, he's just like the yeah, number nine. He's a number nine. Give him the Shira scoring. Like, I've never seen anyone finish like Adam Morgan. Sick, like Relentless. wicked. And then third game into the season, so we're playing like Forest away. We're under coach there, so this time we're under sixteen. So we travel there with sixteens and the eighteens. And so everyone's talking like, oh yeah, like I'm not starting well. We think he'll get a scholarship by Christmas. Da, 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 da. So I'm thinking like if I get a scholarship, I'm there. Gas. We get to the stadium now as we're warming up. So now Pep Segura comes over with a guy called Frank McParland, who's the academy director. So we're warming up, we're in the box doing like tick, like little short passes, warming up, stretching, and they called me over because they, they was with the under 18s So they've come over like, oh, like, how how's your season going? You know what I mean? I'm thinking, you know, it's good. You know what I mean? I've scored in the last two games. I'm confident. Da, 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 da. And they're like, oh. How would you feel about like living in Liverpool um, for like next season? I'm thinking oh, for next season. I'm like, oh, look, if I get a scholarship, I'm, I'm there. To, I'm <laughs> there, you know what I mean? And then they said, and I remember Frank McParland looking. Frank's like a little short, bald, scars guy, but he's quite stocky. And um, and he's one of them. He looked at me and said, "No, I'm talking about like right now. We're looking <laughs> to move you in the next right week." Now. Wow. And I'm like, I looked at him and he goes, "Yeah, we're offering you a two-year scholarship right now." This is before the game. Before, yeah. <laughs> before the third game of the season, I've been offered a scholarship. This this was in like August, September, yeah. so three weeks into the season. So the minute that they said that, my head was just like, yo. yo. I'm like, yes. They're like, oh, what were your parents thinking? I said, don't matter. Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I'm signing the scholarship 100%. Yeah. yeah, like, leave that with me. My parents will be fine. Da, da, da. I'm like, yo, thank you for that. Like, I really appreciate it. And I remember Pep Segura was like, yo, look, like, just keep it, like, you're level headed, you're humble. And you just work hard. We like that about you. Keep it up. And I remember that game, yeah, I probably had one of the best. 
best games I've ever played. Of course you course. did. I had to. We won 3-1. I set up the first goal, set up the second goal, scored the third. I got dragged out in 60 minutes. So I was like, yeah, job done. Safe. Job done. <laughs> and I remember after that, everyone was like, what, what would that man? Could, everyone could just tell that like, my energy was just different. You know what I mean? After that, I was like, oh, what did them not pull you about? I'm like, they've offered me a scholarship. I remember one of the black boys in the team was like, yo, like, sick. Like, where there were a lot of, like, <coughs> we're going to get mm-hmm. onto this in a second mm-hmm. way, but, like, was there a lot of inclusiveness in your, like, dressing room at that time? So, at that time, um, it was a bit of a weird one because, obviously, I'd never heard a Scouse accent until I started playing for Liverpool. Okay. And I'd never heard a black Scouse accent accents, as well. So, it's mad. so, obviously, there was a few black Scousers in our team, the under-14s until 16s. And I got, I'm still friends with a lot of them yeah. now. Um, and do you know what? I, I'd say it was. Yeah. Like, a lot of them, because so some of them went to school together and yeah. things like that. Yeah. So, our team, from I'd say from the get-go, like from young, we like the black kids and the white kids and things like that. We, we got on there. Yeah, well. yeah. I feel like the scouts are quite inclusive, though. You yeah, know? Yeah. I don't feel like there is really yeah. that separation between. Not even there's certain areas. Yeah, I'll yeah, talk to that where if you go there, like I've been called, even when I was playing football, I got called the N word in certain areas and whatnot. But I think scousers as people in general are very like welcoming, yeah, very yeah, inclusive. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, Scouser. So, like, nah, for me, this is what for me, till now, Liverpool's one of my favorite cities in yeah. the whole UK. Like, I love Liverpool, yeah. I go there to this day. So, for me, I think that nah, I think as, as a people, like they're, they're very like respectful, very inclusive, mm-hmm. and they're very down to earth as well. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you the fan is mad in it. Yeah, if you've got hundred million and then you've got one pound, they'll still treat you both the same. Still you know what I mean? Same, so, yeah. nah, big up the scousers, man. So. so, so what now then? So this is on the sixteens now. 16s, three yeah. weeks into the season, manager said, "Yo, Henock, looking to move you down mm-hmm. here." Yeah. I'm guessing you obviously you said yeah. Yeah. So how long was it until you moved? Obviously, this is a new. Two weeks. Changing period again, so two, two weeks, weeks three, now. Yeah, two or three weeks. So they've obviously got in touch with my school, like let them know what's going on. And then they was they said, Look, we're gonna put you on the best schools within the within like Merseyside basically. Right. Um we're gonna move you there, we're gonna put you up in digs, um, like we're gonna basically we're gonna look after you properly. So I remember they came down to my house. So I was living on like some like raggy council estate at the time on the outskirts of money. So they've pulled up outside. I remember it so well. They pulled up in a Range Rover oh and a gosh. BMW uh, the Five Series. So oh gosh. when that happened, I remember like all oh, my neighbors looking outside, and thinking, what's, what's, <laughs> what's going on? Going like, on? Yeah. Yeah. So I Is it our response? Yeah, literally, <laughs> <it's really laughs> our response. I remember. So they've come, they've come down, sat my parents down, and they're like, "Look, we really like your son. He's a good kid. Works hard. Gets on with everyone, and he wants to improve and he wants to make it. We love having him around." We think he's got all the attributes to make it professionally. If not at Liverpool, we'll help him to make it somewhere else. At this moment in time, yo, I am. But this moment in time, like, I find that our parents didn't really actually know yeah, they didn't. how, you know, immersed we were yeah, yeah. in the interest that um, we kind of had at the mm-hmm. time. Yeah, yeah. So this is a proper sit down conversation now. Yeah, yeah. No, what serious. was, like, do your mum and your like in your parents, they, they like, didn't really understand it. They, they got it, but they didn't really understand and like the how, weight of it. Yeah, so I, looking back at it, I didn't really have the support. Mm, mm, like, mm, mm. I, I look at it, I think maybe, doctor. yeah, like till now, she always says to me, like, yo, like, you should have gone to uni. Like, <laughs> nah, you get me, that's not me. <laughs> Don't get me, I enjoyed school, but that's, you know what I mean? I always chase my interests, like, what interests me. And I've always been like that since a kid, even before I was playing football. Um, if something interests me, I'll naturally pursue it and find a way of making money around that um so when i had th- when i had the conversations so with my parents were now like oh like because they was like look if we were moving down from the scholarship for two years and we think he's got the potential to go professional and obviously once he goes professional even with his scholarship when i owned on, on the 16s they was giving me like 70 pound of well on paper 70 yeah, pound yeah. Week, but i was getting more than that uh, from under 16 so they would give you like x amount a week that they will look after you anything you need or whatever not uh, and i remember saying to my parents i was like look you like already messed up sheffield united for me <laughs> yeah. you like already messed up yeah. sheffield united for me i'm so, taking control of this thing so now. this one i said listen the pen. i am no matter you like say yes or no i am moving i'm, gone. I am I'm gone. gone i'm yeah, 15 I'm now <laughs> i'm big man uh, yeah like i can legally i can move out so i, I, I I don't know if they had the conversation with them. I said, yeah. legally, I can move. As, as long as you can look after my boy. Da, 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 da. They was like, my parents were calm. So then after that, they, they, they put me up in, the, in an area called Rain Hill. It's on the outskirts of Liverpool. I know where that is. Nice, really nice area. Like, mm. pop, 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 like. Is this the digs? Yeah, the digs. Yeah. Lived um, with the, so, yeah, so they moved me up to Rain Hill. 
And so this time, like I said, I was, when I moved to Manchester, I was in my second high school. So now this is my third high school. So in year 11, I've gone there, the new high school again. And this one, it was pretty similar um, where there was only, when I came, that was the first black kid, actually. And then a couple of days Crazy. later, my friend Dave came. He was the second. So in the space of two weeks, two random black kids just turned up that play football at the, at the high school. Uh, so I was in year 11 and Dave was in year 10 at the time. And was he in Liverpool as well? Yeah, he's in okay. So they just signed him from uh, Luton. Okay. So he, they signed him uh, in pre-season and then the week that I moved up, they moved him up as well a couple of days after. So yeah, he was in year 10, I was in year 11. He lived at a couple of roads away from me. Um, so yeah, so then I was like, Yo, look, you're going to go to school um, Monday to Friday, but then on a Tuesday and a Thursday, you'd come out and train with the youth team uh, in the day. So you'd, you'd, you'd only, you, you wouldn't go to school. So you'd go to school only in the afternoon. So oh, yeah. in the morning, you'd go train with the youth team. So on a Tuesday and a Thursday, on the six hours training with the youth team. So that like just gave me a next level like, feeling like, towards football. Uh, yeah, of, a, of an advantage. So, mm-hmm. um, so I was doing that. I loved it. Like Reno was fun, like nice area, this, that, the other. Um, and then that's when Raheem signed as well. So I'd been in the school about a month. So I'd only moved up about a month later. And then um, Liverpool ended up signing Raheem Sterling from uh, QPR. Mad. And then, so these times it was, it was a bit weird because I didn't know who he was. So yeah. uh, I was just hearing that oh, you're going to sign this kid. Da, 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 da. I was thinking, yo, you're signing for like a couple of million. This kid must be good. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Never seen any videos of him, whatever. And I remember um, the day uh, that he signed up, people in the school was all talking about it because there was loads of Liverpool fans in the school that I went to. So they was like, oh, this is kid Raheem Sterling. Da, 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 da. So I'm like, oh yeah, I've heard like he's going to come this week. And then that day I was walking home after school. There was a van uh, that was just following me from behind. And I kept looking. I was thinking like, this is looking a bit suspicious. <laughs> book, and then next minute, was this, next minute it like, went past me and then there was a guy hanging out. It was literally like this, hanging out the van with a camera. And then he had, he had like a, like a high-vis like press. on. Yeah, pressing on it. It said the sun. Sick. So obviously, you know, Liverpool people don't Sick. like the sun. So I'm yeah. thinking, wow, like this guy was hanging out. And then I was in the back of a... Oh, I can't remember what newspaper it was the sun but then it was like tabloids some random tabloid but it was like a thing it was me in it but it was basically trying to they basically you put a picture Sterling. of me thinking I was Raheem Sterling <laughs> and this obviously this time Raheem was like 14, 15 I remember, I remember it really well my friend showed me it was like um, in Manchester I was like yo in your newspaper in the newspaper but it was a picture of me so they thought obviously some, someone had tipped them off that oh yeah Raheem Sterling was going to go to this high school da, 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 da. he's be one of the only black kids there so it they must be him yeah, so it's <laughs> got to be him. It's got to be him. Fifteen years old, like the Sun newspaper was like profiling me. So yeah, they had me in that. Profiling I can't remember what page Jake. it was, but yeah, there was a guy, literally, I remember, fifteen years old, and that big man is just hanging out with a big camera like that, like taking pictures in there. I'm thinking, mad. So then that, I've gone home, and then the taxi used to come pick us up. It's picked me up, and then we've gone around the corner to pick Dave up. And when that's happened, he's jumped in, and I just remember there's like some little guy jumping in, and I'm thinking, and I looked up, and then. Back then as well, I had this trim, I had like the Mohawk, yeah. and I had the three stars on the yeah, side of my head. Yeah. And then when he came in, and he had like a side, like a part Mohawk, and he had a star on the side of his head as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking, I looked at him, it's supposed to be him. I'm thinking, and then he's like, what's going on, bro? I'm Raheem, I'm like, oh, Hanok, jumped in. And then from then on, we just like, me, him, and Dave, we just clicked. 